we have reached the end, finally, of this surface grinder build project. I believe it has actually taken me more time to edit the videos than it even took to finish the project. And finishing the project alone took a long time because I was only working on it a little bit of, of a time each week. So in this video, we're going to finish up the chuck, wire up the surface grinder, and then do some final assembly, or maybe final assembly then wiring, and grind in the bed and the chuck, and we'll be throwing some sparks. Here is me starting to mill down the magnetic chuck. If you recall from earlier videos, the chuck was sitting on a shim plate, so it ended up being ground way out of a square. And I've got about one pass through that before I realized it would take all day to machine down that hard ma magnetic stuff. So I threw a big, uh, and, um, no, what do they call that? A, uh, surfacing mill and took care of it on the CNC pretty quickly. I had to drill out and retap the holes for the little plaque, which I cleaned up and screwed that back on. Give it a nice fresh coat of paint. And there were a lot of bolts that were in a bucket and I don't remember where any of them went. And partially I replaced a lot of the hardware with new hardware, but there were some things that were left over as with any restoration project. I had to put the lamp back together. It's such a cool looking lamp with its retro vibe. So running the wire all the way through that. pivots on a little ball on the side of the surface grinder. So then put that back on and attach the lamp to it. Now time for final assembly. These are the new uh, catch plates that we water jet out of sheet metal and bent and formed, welded to look like the old catch plates. And they look great. They have little panels on them that lets you, if you have a long thing to grind, you pull them off. And here's the final assembly of the bed with a cross side mechanism that we worked on in the last video. These bolts were really tricky to get on. And this thing weighed probably like 100 pounds, so it was a huge mess trying to lift it up and tighten everything, get it in their little dust shields that keep dust from getting down into the ways. And then now we're attaching the cross slide belt housing. There's the dust shields going in. You can see here a clean, the clean ways. You have a flat way and a V way. So it, it, it indexes on the V way and then it just sits on the flat way and it's just sitting there. If you crank it too hard and it hits the end of the cable that uses, that there it is, the cable going in there, it rides up and it throws the whole thing out of calibration. It appears that they actually changed this from a uh, some sort of screw driven cross slide to a belt because so it's a lot harder to turn than it seems like it should be and this cable was just kind of clamped in there in a weird way and there was a lot of strange stuff going on with the old shaft that made me think that there was oil control which doesn't make a lot, a lot of sense for the way it was set up and plans that I found while restoring it seem to indicate that these models used to have a, uh, a worm screw 
for the cross slide. So here are those guards going in, I have little shields all around. Nice new stainless steel hardware. Hey everybody. The service grinder is all back together. What's left to do is wire up the chuck and wire up the motor. So we have a bunch of new electrical parts and some of the old ones replacing the flexible conduit that was all gross and dirty from the last one. The chuck has been surfaced uh, roughly on the, on the Haas CNC and then when, when it, we get it in we'll level it out. I uh, got my wire clippers, strippers, pliers, wire nuts. These flexible cable grips, which I sandblasted, they were on the old machine. New chuck wire, two wire chuck wire. Uh, high quality outlets for the outlet box that goes on the back of the machine. A nice high quality switch for the switched outlet. One of these outlets is gonna be switched. One is always on. New uh, adapters for the, the um, flexible conduit. A new appliance cable, this is a five wire, so it's four wires on a ground. That will allow us to do the three phase and the single phase power. The motor's three phase, and then we'll have a single phase for the outlets, the chuck and the lamp. That's your uh, locking five wire plug. The switch housing, the switch, the motor switch. This is the switch for the magnet chuck. Rebuild the magnet chuck. Uh, <coughs> box, this is the uh, rectifier, so basically it, it uses the AC, it uses probably the, the this really large, it's probably a ceramic capacitor, and the rectifier to turn AC into really rough DC, and that powers the, um, the magnet chuck. So let's get started. All right, putting it all together. One thing that really is satisfying towards the end of a project is when you get to redo all the wiring and make it nice and clean and well connected and make sure everything is fit just right and organized. So this was rebuilding the magnetic chuck which we painted and fixed the fuse actually. That was one of the problems with the surface grinder when we bought it was that it just had a broken fuse holder, and I think that's why they were trying to get rid of it. So here we are testing the chuck for the first time since we purchased the thing. And the magnet works great. Can't knock over that parallel, and can't really get it off when it is knocked over. This has a nice feature where you turn the switch in another direction and it, it sends AC through it, so it demagnetizes. Final install of the switch and motor power cable. Wired up three phase, put the switch in there. That lower switch controls one of the outlets, which allows us to basically turn on the lamp or other accessories we might have. And then now we have to get the power plug wired up. It's a five wire because there is a 120 volt circuit and a three phase circuit in the same machine for the chuck and the lamp. We have 120 volts. Finally get to put the guard on. And we painted this, as I may have said in previous videos, to match the, there's a power hammer in this uh, makerspace. So we painted it gray and then painted the sort of business end parts, the chuck and the guard. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, it runs. Now once we got it running, we faced the wheel and began uh, tramming in the bed, so there was, you know, any variations from assembly and fixing it and cleaning it. Now we're going to ensure that the bed is dead flat with rel uh, relative to how it moves on the surface grinder. 
And while we were doing this, we were checking for level, we were checking for uh, how, how it was moving and calibrated every part of the machine. I tell you, you get quite a workout when you don't have a hydraulic cross slide. So now I'm using a machinist stone to remove any burrs. And we set the chuck on upside down. And you can imagine how we held it down. We just simply turned on the magnet and the chuck held fast to the bed. And now we're machining down the bottom of the chuck dead flat. Now, mostly I'm doing woodworking these days, and so this is a long way of basically jointing and planing a piece of metal. We established a flat surface on the bed, and now we're going to establish a flat surface on one side, and then we'll use that flat surface to trim in the top of the chuck. Now, yes, you could totally have the surface is out of parallel, um, but it's negligible in this situation. We put a little oil to protect both surfaces. And mount the chuck on the bed. There's some clamps and T-bolts that hold this down. With the chuck held down, we can continue cleaning up the top and making the machine surface that was pretty flat to begin with, really flat with regards to the motion of the machine. For a roughing pass without coolant, you don't really want to take much more than two thousandths at a time. And you have to um, dress the wheel with that diamond dresser, you know, every so often if you're taking off a lot of material. Here we go. So you, I would basically do 2,000th passes to rough it in, then redress the wheel, and then run several, one, like one thou, half thou, and then you just run it without changing it, and it cleans up everything else. So that is the surface grinder all done. Thanks a lot for watching.